Hello everyone, this is Brad Tylus from Autodesk. I wanted to welcome you to another Fusion 360 Live Tech Thursday. Um, on the keyboard, I have my friend Angelo. So if you have any questions as we're going through, please feel free to uh, post it out there and he'll either uh, answer it or, or throw it in my uh, my chat so I can take a look at, at that later. So um, I'm going to start out by going over something you eagle-eyed viewers pointed out last time. Um, we created this cap and some of you mentioned that this edge was tapered and so if we were to try and assemble this together you would notice that that would be physically impossible. Um, so kudos for those of you that saw that. Um, I didn't take that into consideration. So how would we go about fixing this? Um, so what I'm going to do real quick is turn off the, um, let's just turn off this basket here. And one of the things I would probably do is try and take a measurement. So I'm going to try and find out what this angle is. But you'll notice when I click on those two faces, it doesn't give me an angle result. Um, so I don't know what angle that is at. Um, so, you know, I, I could have tried to rotate the face or added some draft or something like that, but I don't have that option. So here's a cool little tip um, that allows you to quickly fix something like this. We're actually going to use surfacing to do this. And there's a command in here called extrude. Now it's asking for a profile, and you'll notice it doesn't let me click on an edge. It only lets me click on a face. I'm gonna click on this face right here, and I'm gonna to start to drag up. Now, what's kind of hard to see is that it's actually just a thin sheet. I mean, it's there's no thickness to it. And this will make more sense here in just a second. So I'm gonna drag it up, and I'm gonna go at least to that height. I could go further if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK, and watch what happens over here um, actually, let me let me do that again. I'm going to make sure my basket cap is the active um, component. So we'll do that again real quick. I'll say extrude. I'm just going to snap to that face, say OK. And we can see that it added two separate bodies. In fact, if I turn off this basket, you'll see that there's no thickness to them. It took those edges and it extruded it straight up. And that's pretty much what we want. I don't need um, this inside one, so I'll just go ahead and remove that. And then I'm gonna jump back and use one of the commands I've, I've been using quite a bit lately that I really like is this replace face. So we're gonna use this uh, surface to help us replace that angled surface. So. What's our source? It's going to be this angled surface. What's our target? I'll click on that guy there. Say OK. And you'll notice that now that face is straight up and down. We, we used that surface to help us out with that. So now let's turn the basket back on. And now you'll see it's still going to hit. So we need to make a slight change to the basket to allow some clearance there. So I'm going to activate um, the basket because that's the model I'm going to be modifying. We'll come in here and combine these two parts and we'll use the cut command. Now I obviously want to keep the tool so it's going to use this one that's kind of highlighted in red. It's going to use that to subtract or cut some material out of this blue part here. So when I say OK, we can now see that we have a straight wall and we can slide down into that opening there. And if I wanted to, I could come in and um, you know add a little bit of an offset to this face here just to give it a little bit more clearance if I wanted to. Um, I could go ahead and do that if I, if I wanted to, just to give it a little bit more clearance. So anyways, that's a quick way of fixing a problem, especially when I didn't know what the angle was or anything like that. So, okay. What we are going to work on today is this, the sharpener part of the pencil sharpener. Um, 
And I'll be honest, this one kind of threw me for a loop. This one was kind of tough to make. And I came up with a couple different ideas. There's probably multiple ways we could do this. Um, but this is one of the ways I came up with. And we might go a little bit long because there's quite a bit of geometry on this guy. So uh, bear with me and uh, let's dive right in. So um, in the description of the YouTube video uh, is the outline and the drawing. So I'm going to be referencing this drawing um, and I also put my outline that I usually create in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off. I don't need the basket anymore. Um, and I don't need the basket cap, but I am going to start with um, using some existing geometry. And just like before, uh, we're going to be creating a new part or a new component. So I'm going to come in here and say new component. I'll give it a name and let's just call this uh, cutter assembly because there's actually um, multiple parts in this. So I'm just going to call it cutter assembly and you'll see that I now have a new component called cutter assembly and it's active. So I'm going to start, it basically kind of fits around this little area you see kind of in here. So I like to do this in context design um, where I'm using existing geometry to help me with my design. So I can come in here and say create a cylinder, a cylinder primitive, and then I'm just going to get near that bottom face right there. You can kind of see how it's kind of highlighting that face. And then I can draw my cylinder. So we basically we're creating a primitive that's right on the bottom of that existing geometry. And I want this to be uh, 0.625 in diameter. And I'm actually going to go um, up this direction. So it's in the negative direction in this case. So I'm going to say minus 0.2. Okay. So we're kind of using that existing geometry. You can kind of see the existing geometry there and the new geometry that's kind of wrapped over it. So now I have something I'm kind of starting with. I don't really need this part four anymore, so I'm just going to turn that guy off. Okay, so let me uh, bring this back up real quick. So basically what we just did is we just started with this part here. And again, I don't know how well this is going to focus or whatever, but I'm going to start kind of building the geometry down. And then it's really kind of hard to see, but there's a tapered part that the pencil actually fits down into. So that's what we're going to be creating next. And Again, to simplify things, I like to use these cylinder primitives because I don't have to create a sketch, then I'd have to create a circle, then I'd have to do an extrude, and that would be three different features in my timeline, whereas in this case, I can pick on the existing cylinder, it knows where the center is, I can come in here and say um, it's you know, 0.5 in diameter, I can start to drag and specify what the depth is in this case according to the drawing, um, it's 0 0.07 and you'll notice it's just a single feature in my timeline so it keeps my timeline simpler and I'll do one more of those I'll do a cylinder on this bottom point right here and let's just go 0.785 and this is a fairly thin part so I'm gonna say 0 0.05 and you can kinda of see again this is kinda of that that stacked cake method that we talked about last time um, and if I look at the drawing real quick, here is what we just did, the, the, the diameters and the different thicknesses. So we did this guy, this guy, and then it's kind of hard to see, um, but this little thin one right here also. Okay. Um, obviously we need a hole for the pencil to get inserted into. Again, I could create a sketch. I could do all that kind of stuff, but instead I'm going to pre-select that face, right mouse click, and you'll notice that the uh, hole command is in this little um, pop-up that comes up. So I'm going to say hole, and it just kind of randomly put it where I clicked, so you'll notice it's not centered. So what I like to do is I like to kind of drag it, and then you'll see that point right there appear, and all I have to do is get near it, and it's going to snap to that point. And so it's perfectly centered. Then I come in and I can say I want a flat drill point. I don't need it to be sharp. 
I want it to be flat. Um, I'll specify the diameter in this case is uh, 0.485 from the drawing. And I want it to go all the way through. And you'll notice it says distance. Well, just like in the extrude command and some of those other commands, you can specify distance, you can go to something, or I could say go through all, and you'll notice that it's going to figure out and go through all for me. So I now have a hole that goes all the way through. So simple timeline, and not a complex part, but you can kind of see we, we got some geometry going on here. Okay, now we're going to create that tapered uh, portion, and again, it's kind of hard to to see here, but you can kind of see it tucked in all these little ribs right here. And you can kind of see part of it here. Um, you can see it's an angle of 12 degrees. So that's going to come into play here real quick. Okay, so now I do need to create some geometry. Um, I could do this as a revolve, uh, but in this case I'm actually going to keep it simple and I'm going to just create a sketch, draw a circle. I know what the overall diameter is supposed to be. Um, so 0.585, so we can kind of see what that looks like. And that's it. I'm going to, again, keep it pretty simple. And I'm going to select both of these and say extrude. Now, if I start to drag, we'll see it's just creating a simple extrusion. But you'll notice that built into the extrude command, we have this taper angle. And that's kind of what this little rocker thing is right here. So you can kind of see as, as I drag this, I can actually change the taper angle. Um, and again, according to the drawing, is it's minus 12 for the angle. And then the overall uh, distance I want to go um, is 1.25. So we went, we extruded down 1.25 at an angle of 12 degrees, a taper angle of 12 degrees. So you can kind of see how it's creating this point for me automatically. Now, I've shown this previously in other live streams. I, I like to build in context, but sometimes I like to break things apart or keep things separate and then combine them back together. And so I'm going to be working on this part here. So I, instead of joining it, I'm going to say new body. In fact, let me expand this open over here. I'm going to say new body. I'll say OK. And now you'll see we have that region up there that's its own body. And then we have this guy down here that its own body. And that's going to allow me to you know, make some changes to it, run commands like the shell command, for example, that I don't want to affect the top part of, of this um, whole area right here. Okay, um, let me show the drawing here. There is a rectangular rib you can kind of see right here that's going to kind of go all the way across and slice through this area right here. So I'm going to create that next. And to do that, um, I should have stayed on the drawing, we can actually see that it's 1.3 inches. So here's the bottom of that rectangular rib. It's 1.3 inches from right here. Well, if we take a look at this, we came down 1.2 inches. I need to go a little bit further. I want to create a sketch that's actually kind of below this point. So we're going to use the construct offset plane. So I go ahead and click on that guy. I'll click on this face and we can see that I can specify a distance. So I'm going to start to drag and you can see I can specify a distance. So I'm going to say 1.3. And if we look at it from the side, we can definitely see that that's kind of below that point. So we're going to create a plane that's 1.3 down. If we look at it right from the side, you can kind of see that's where it is. Now I can create a sketch on that plane. So it's a great way to you know, put a sketch somewhere that's not physically on the model. In fact, I'm just going to kind of look at it from the bottom here and I'll just create a rectangle. 
I'm going to do a center rectangle. Click on this guy. And I'm just going to go ahead and make this um, 0.1 wide. And you can see when I hit the tab key, it kind of locks in the width. So you can see that little lock icon next to the 0.1. Now, I want to, um, I'm just going to click somewhere on the screen to kind of show this. I want this to be on this edge right here. So I'm going to do a tangent constraint. And I'll click on that edge there. And I'll click on this edge here. And you'll see it'll jump, hopefully. Yep, there we go. Um, it'll jump that line up onto that edge. It made it tangent to that edge. Okay, so now I have this rectangular shape. And you'll notice, you know, for you eagle-eyed people there, you know, it extends out past it, but we're actually going to grab this profile and it's going to use that curved edge. So it's actually going to follow that curved edge. I'll say extrude. I like to start to drag up and you'll notice as we're dragging up it's wanting to cut but I don't want it to cut I want it to join okay and I want it to go up to that face so I could click on that face and it'll snap up to that face that 1.3 or better is to oops is to say uh, to object and I'll just click on that face and it's going to extrude up to that object, that face right there. And the reason that is better is because if this thickness were ever to change, this rectangle knows it's supposed to stay stuck to that object, wherever that object might be. Now, here's um, a little tip. So it says join. Well, notice it's touching this part here but it's also touching this part here. So which part is it gonna to join to? So in this case, I'm gonna turn off that guy. So the only option it has is to join to this part here. So just a little bit of a tip, you might want to you know, turn parts on or off to make sure it's joining to just what you want. So I'll say okay, and we now have an interesting looking shape that looks like that. Okay. Now here you're going to see why we made this a separate body because now I want to again make it so a hole is in here. Um, we're going to shell this out so the pencil will fit in here. So I'll come in here and pre-select that face and say shell. I'll start to drag so we kind of visually see what that looks like. <laughs> Um, but in this case, the thickness is 0.1. So you'll notice it's no longer shelling this little area here because this is 0.1 in thickness, so it, there's no room for it to shell. And so we get this nice little hollow cone shape. So again, I could have done this with a revolve, but then I would have had to, you know, um, created lines at an angle, offset those, created an axis, revolve that around, etc., etc. Multiple ways you can get this done. Okay, let's take a look at that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add this feature down here. And we can kind of see it's actually shelled out and there's a cylinder inside there with a, with a slot in it and all this kind of stuff. So let's kind of work on that area. So again, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm lazy like that. I'm going to do a cylinder primitive. I'll click on that face. I'll click on that center point right there and start to drag. Now I want it to be a very specific size. I want it to match that edge. And so you notice I can just get near that edge and it's going to snap to it. In fact, I could get to that corner if I wanted to. I'll go ahead and click. And so now it's going to match that curved rectangular extrusion. This guy here um, is supposed to be 0.21 and 
again, I'm going to shell this guy out. I don't want it to affect this. So I'm going to, instead of say join, I'm going to say new body. I used information from this other body to create this body, but now you'll notice that we actually have three of them. I'll turn this guy back on. You'll see we've kind of broke it into three different chunks. Okay. Okay. Um, I also want to taper or angle this. And the fastest way of doing that is with the draft command. So the pole direction is going to be this face here. You can kind of think of this pole direction as what edge is the face going to hinge around. So if I click on that face, it's going to hinge on the edges of that face. In this case, there's only one. What's the face? This is the face that we're actually going to hinge or rotate, I should say. And you can see as I drag that, sure enough, it's hinging on that pull direction. Okay. And I want to do an angle of 30. So just like before, I could have drawn a sketch, drawn a profile, revolved that around and gotten the same thing. But in this case, we just did a cylinder and then we just did a draft. And what's cool about this is I can come back and change the angle of this draft at any time if I needed to. Much simpler than going into a sketch to do it. Okay, I'm going to, again, pre-select, right mouse click and say shell. I'll start to drag and you can see it's only shelling this body. In fact, I'll turn this other guy off. It's not affecting that other part because we're only working on this particular body. That's kind of why I break these into smaller chunks. <laughs> okay, um, 0 0.05 is the thickness for that. I'll say okay. And then I want to create this cylinder right here. We can see that um, it's a cylinder with a slot inside of that. So we can see it's 0.375 in diameter, um, 0.22 in depth. Okay, so cylinder, I'll click on that face. It finds the center of it for me automatically. Um, 0.375 for the diameter. And then for the depth, I like to start to drag just to see is it a positive or negative number. It's 0.22. There we go. Okay. So again, think about what this would have looked like for a sketch to revolve that around. Um, I would have had to have drawn a profile that looked like this, you know, with lots of measurements and angles and all that kind of stuff to create a profile to revolve around. I absolutely could have done that, but I think it's much, much simpler to kind of break it down into its simpler forms. It's a cylinder, it's got some draft, it's shelled out, and then it's got another cylinder inside of that. We're gonna learn some, some tips and tricks like grouping things together and organizing things as we go through here. Um, you'll see that a little bit later, but like I could, for example, group all of this stuff together if I wanted to. But you'll see that more um, as we move on. Okay. Hopefully you guys are liking this. If this is making sense for you, um, make sure you do a thumbs up if you don't mind to show that you're learning something from this. So, okay. Um, I'm going to now create that slot. So I'm just going to create a sketch on this bottom face right here. Now, something I want you to notice, how often have I gone to the menu across the top? I've pretty much been doing everything with my right mouse click. I'm not having to go select commands like the extrude command or the draft command or the shell command or anything like that. It's all pretty much right at my fingertips. Okay. So um, I'm going to do R for rectangle. I want to create a rectangle. Actually, I lied. Let's do a C for circle. 
we'll start with a circle here. And notice when I hit C for circle, it gives me all of my circle options there. If I hit R for rectangle, it gives me all of my uh, rectangle options there. So I'm going to do C for circle. I'll click there and we'll just do 0.25 diameter. Now I can do R for rectangle. Now I typically, I like to use the shortcuts, but as I'm doing these live streams, I kind of show where the menu is because I know a lot of people are learning, you know, this is the first time they've used Fusion or whatever. Um, and I don't want you to have to remember all of these shortcuts, but as you get more proficient with the product, definitely use these shortcuts like O for offset and L for line and T for trim. Um, it just really speeds things up. Okay, so I'm gonna do a center rectangle. I'll click on the center there. Now I am concerned about how wide this slot it needs to be, so I'm going to tab over here and type in 0.17. Okay, now no matter what I do, that rectangle is going to be 0.7 wide. And then I'm just going to click somewhere because I don't really care right now. I want Fusion to do the work for me. I want this corner to be touching this circular edge. So we'll use the coincident constraint. You'll notice that some of my sketch is constrained and some of it is not constrained. As soon as I say I want that point to be touching that circle, you'll notice it's still 0.17 wide, but it brought that line down to be touching that circle, to be coincident with it. And because it's a center rectangle, it did the same thing at the top. So believe it or not, that one constraint has fully constrained this sketch. And now I have a profile that I can use. I'm going to grab these three regions right there. I'll say extrude, start to drag, and we can see I could either extrude to add material or if I push it in, it's going to remove material. And once again, instead of distance, I'm going to say I want it to go all the way to this flat face right here. So I'm going to click on that flat face and we can see that sure enough, it's milling or cutting into that depth, whatever that depth is. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And we now have that recessed slot. OK, let's turn these other bodies back on. And I pretty much have the defining shape of this pencil sharpener. But instead of three separate bodies, I'm, I'm pretty much done with it, so I'm going to combine them together into one body. So I'll click on the Combine command, or if you don't have it as a shortcut up there, Modify, Combine. The target, I'm going to click this first one, this body one. And then the tool, I'm going to click on that guy, and you'll notice it turned red. And by default, it remembered my last combine command that I did was a cut, but in this case I want to join them together. And you'll see how these edges, there's not an edge across there anymore like there used to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and join that one also. Now you'll notice keep tools is turned on. If I were to say OK right now, it would join them together, but it would also keep those extra bodies. And that can get a little bit confusing. Um, I don't need them anymore, so I'm going to turn off Keep Tools and watch what happens to the bodies over here. When I say OK, we are now back to one body combined all together. OK, now comes the interesting part. Um, these ribs, you can kind of see them here to kind of give structure and strength. So how do we go about doing this? And this is kind of what threw me for a loop. I was like, oh, I can use the web command, or I can use the rib command. And I couldn't. It was really interesting, uh, mainly because I think it was a cylindrical part that went all the way around. And so I couldn't use the web or the rib command in this case. So I came up with a different method, um, So, which is going to be a little bit different. And I don't know if you'll like it or not or whatever, but we're actually going to use surfacing 
to do this. And hopefully you'll see some tips and tricks that you, you might be able to apply in some of your designs. Okay, so I'm going to come back here. And the first thing I want to do is create some geometry. But I want to basically extrude it to this part right here. So I need to create a sketch out here somewhere. Under the Construct menu, we have a tangent plane. Okay, then it's going to ask for a face. I'm going to go ahead and click on this face, and you can see that it actually created a plane tangent to that face. And I can actually put it anywhere on that face. So it's stuck to that circular face. And in this case, I'm going to leave it at zero. But it's a really cool way of creating a plane on a circular edge at a particular angle. So I could say 45, for example, and now it's going to create that plane at a 45 degree angle. But we'll keep it at zero. OK. So I now have a construction plane that's touching that face right there. And I can now create a sketch on that face. OK. On the drawing, um, in this view right here, you'll see a bunch of different dimensions. And you kind of see these center lines. And so we're actually going to be creating these center lines and then adding some thickness to them. So I'm going to just be referencing these numbers you see here when I'm creating this sketch. I want to grab some information from that face. So I'm going to do P for project. And I'm going to make sure I'm doing just the specified entities. And I'm just going to grab this face. If I had left it to bodies, it's just going to do the outline. I don't know if you can see that really well. But it's not grabbing any information in here for me. By saying specified entities, I'm saying I only want to project this face. And so you can kind of see how these lines are being projected also. And nothing up here is. So I'm going to just say that's the face I want projected. And I'll say OK. We can now see those dots on the corners and the purple lines. So I'm just going to draw a couple quick lines here. Now, you'll notice it'll automatically catch to the center here. And in this sketch, you'll see that that's the case. I want to. So I'm going to just click there. Um, I'm just going to kind of randomly click around. And then I'm just going to add some dimensions later. So I'm just going to do something like that, make sure I get to the um, center point there and then I can say I want that line to be vertical so you can kind of see how that worked um, there's a line that kind of comes across here and again I'm not worried too much about dimensions right now but we'll come back to that here in a second and then the same thing with this I'm just gonna draw a line down to catch there and a line down to catch there and then there's one final um, that goes all the way across like so. So I'm just kind of mocking up what I want this to look like. Um, and then there is one right here in the center that goes all the way up. Now you'll notice it's not catching to anything. And that's because I only projected this outside face. And so that makes me a little bit nervous. So I'm going to go ahead and project that cone face also. And now when I do my line, I can see it snap. You can kind of see how it's snapping right there. I'm getting that midpoint constraint showing up. So now I'm confirmed that I actually caught to an edge. So definitely take the time to make sure you're getting the results that you want. Now I can start throwing some dimensions on here. So from this point here to this point here, that's supposed to be, again, just from the drawing, 0.22. And you can see how that line turned black, uh, which means it's constrained. I'll do the same thing with this line here. That is supposed to be uh, 0.64. I was actually pretty close. <laughs> um, same thing with this guy real quick, um, 0.34. 
And then here's a neat tip. I've shown this before. I'm gonna throw a dimension from here to here. And I'll just place it out here so it's easier to see. That's supposed to be 0.169, okay? Then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'll place it there. And I want it to be the same. All I have to do is click on that existing dimension. And you can see I have quite a few dimensions. And when I hit enter, you'll see that that moved and that number is the same as that number there. And we can now see that this is all my lines are fully constrained, which is exactly what I want to try and achieve. That way I know things are gonna act the way I would expect them to if I ever made changes to the sketch. Okay, so now we've got this weird looking thing. And this is, again, where I was like, oh, I could just come in here and say, you know, create um, a web, but you'll notice a web is for internal type stuff. You'll notice it's kind of like inside that handle of that box cutter. It doesn't do it on the outside or external. And then the same thing with a rib, um, it didn't work in this case. So I was like, man, how do I quickly create these? And I didn't want to complicate my sketch and come in here and start doing offsets in one direction, you know, for example, like this, and then do an offset in the other direction. I mean, look how complicated my um, sketch would quickly get, and that's just for this little guy right here, right? So, I'm gonna show you with surfacing. So I'm gonna jump into the surface tab across the top. And under the Create menu, you'll notice that these um, icons are kind of orange, but they look very similar. Extrude, Revolve, Sweep, and Loft, just like you see in Solid. Extrude, Revolve, Sweep, and Loft. But notice those are blue icons. These are kind of these orange icons. So um, that's how you can kind of tell the difference. So I'm gonna say Extrude, okay. Then I'm gonna click on this edge right here. And I'm gonna to start to drag. And notice what it's doing. It's basically creating a thin, no thickness surface. I'm going to, and it looks just like the regular extrude command. I'm gonna say to object, okay? And I'm going to select this cone as the to object, but you'll notice that I get an error message. That typically has to do with this chain faces. So you'll notice this is extend faces or chain faces. I'm gonna click on chain faces. Let me kind of explain what's going on there. Right here, and you can kind of see with this icon, and I don't know how well it's gonna share across the stream or not, but this extrude is basically stopping at the first edge or first surface that it gets to and it does not continue on where this one it extends all the way and that's what happened right here it went to this first surface and it had to stop okay because these edges don't touch that surface so by turning this guy on I'm saying go ahead and extrude through those or chain all the way through those. And so I get that guy. Let me go ahead and add in some other um, profiles. So I'm going to select that line and you can see, sure enough, it goes in. And you'll see that it's not extending through the cone. Okay, it's, it's chaining to that uh, angled surface. I'll go ahead and throw this guy in there so you can kind of see what that looks like. Then I'll throw this guy on there, okay? Then I'm going to click on this edge here and you'll notice that I'm not getting a preview and I get a warning. Some profiles failed to create tool bodies. Well, why is that? Well, it's expecting to intersect this cone and it's physically not. Whereas all of these other lines are, this one is not. So. I'm going to unselect that guy and we're going to do this in a two-step process. So I'm going to extrude all of those edges. 
I'm going to um, say OK. And notice over here what we get. We get a new icon. And they're open cylinders. Where a solid body is a closed cylinder, a surface is like an open cylinder. It kind of looks like a surface. <laughs> okay. I'm going to turn my last sketch back on. I'll do that exact same extrude. What's my profile? These are my profiles. What's my distance? Well, I'm going to say two object, but instead of picking the cone, this time I'm going to pick that back wall. And sure enough, I get a nice preview of what that's going to look like. I'll say OK. And we now have a bunch of individual flat surfaces. But what's cool about this is we can now use some other surfacing commands such as the thicken command. So here you can see under the create we have this thicken command. What's the face? I'm going to click on and I'm going to make sure chain selection is turned on that way if it can it's going to select all of them. Okay and you can see we can add some thickness to this. So it's taking that zero thickness and adding some extrusion basically. Well, I want it to be equal, so I'm going to say symmetric. You can kind of see what's going to happen here. Okay. And then I can specify the thickness. Now, I want this to be um, 0 0.05 thick. So watch what happens when I type in 0 0.05. Well, it's going 0 0.05 in one direction and 0 0.05 in the other direction. And I want the whole rib to be 0 0.05 in thickness. So I need to go half of that. I'm really bad at math. I, you know, I could probably do it mentally, but I'm just going to come in here and say divided by 2. And again, that's probably hard to see. But I said 0 0.05 slash or divide by 2 and it's going to make that 0 0.025 in each direction and so that's the result I would expect and now I can come in and start adding these other faces and it's almost like we're using the web command so I'm just gonna grab all of these guys and we can see that we created that okay and then there's one more right there Make sure I grab that guy. And I'm going to say OK. And notice what we got here. It is an actual body. So we use these surfaces to create that particular body. OK. Now, I, obviously, it's, it looks weird. It's extending past the model, all that kind of stuff. And now I want to kind of curve it. You'll notice that. Um, let me take a look at the drawing here. It's got a nice curved shape to it. Okay, so just like before, we're going to use the replace face. So I'm going to jump back to the solid. I'm going to say replace face. Okay, what's the source face? I'm going to click on that guy. And then what's the target face? I'm going to click on that guy. Now you'll notice it's thinking for a little bit and I get an error message. The face could not be replaced. Um, so why is that? Well, the face that you're using as the source has to be bigger or extend past the face that you're replacing. So all we're giving it is this little tiny sliver up here and it's saying, hey, I can't replace that. So we have to do a little bit of manual work here. But again, hopefully you'll, you'll learn some tips here. I'm going to go back to my Surface tab. I'm going to create an offset of this curved face right here. So I'm going to click on that and watch what happens underneath this body. I'm going to leave the offset at zero. And what it did is it created, let me turn off these two guys, it created a zero offset 
of this body right here. Kind of weird. I'm going to turn that off. Then I can come in here and say extend. And here's a simple example. I'm just going to click on this edge right here and start to drag up. And you can see we can add some geometry to that. I don't care how far. I'm just going to say OK. I'll do that extend again. And I can grab that edge. And notice we can bring that down. OK. In fact, I'm going to grab both of the edges at the same time. I'll drag them down. I can even click on a point, and it's going to extend those faces down. So we used information from the body to create this surface right here. Hopefully you guys kind of see what's going on here. Now I'll come in here and do the replace face. What's the source face? So I want to change that. What's the target? It's going to be that guy. And check out what it did. Because this surface was bigger, it allowed me to replace that face. So hopefully you thought that was cool. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, hopefully you're learning some new tricks. And all I have to do now is turn off that surface, and you can kind of see what was left. And there we go. So some pretty complex geometry that we couldn't use commands like rib and web, but we were able to you know, use regular surfacing commands, which is kind of weird because you know typically we, we want to keep solid bodies and all that kind of stuff. So Okay, we are now um, ready to combine this guy because it's a separate body. So I'm going to say combine that guy and that guy. We're going to join them together. I don't need to keep the tool, so I'm going to say OK. And now we're down to one body. But you'll also notice I've got all of these surfaces, and they still exist. They're just turned off. Okay. But it kind of complicates my browser right here. So I'm going to select all of these guys. I'm going to right mouse click. And I'm going to say remove. Now I get asked a lot, what's the difference between delete and what's the difference between remove? 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to want to remove stuff out. And watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to say remove. And notice they were removed out of my design. However, they still exist. In fact, you'll see all these little remove body features that were added in my timeline. Okay, If I had said delete, I could have potentially gotten a lot of downstream errors because stuff that um, was referencing those surfaces, like these guys here, if you delete it, they have nothing to reference anymore and they go, hey, I don't know what to do. So removing says, I just don't want them in my design but I still can reference them. So like I said, 99% of the time, you're probably going to use remove. Now, I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to learn a new trick here. I have all of these features in my timeline that I don't really want to see. So I'm going to select all of these, right mouse click, and you'll notice there's an option in here called create group. So I'm going to say create group, and those icons all went away. And you kind of see this one feature in my timeline. And if I hover over that, you can see it shows everything that's inside that group. I can click on this little plus symbol to expand it open. I can hit the little minus symbol to kind of close it up. I can even rename this group and call it, you know, rib surfaces. And now if I hover over that, I can see, sure enough, those are the rib surfaces, for example. So it's kind of a cool way to organize some things together. So, for example, I could group those together because they were all similar. I mentioned, you know, I could grab a whole bunch of features like this guy all the way through um, to here. I could group those together. 
and you can kind of see how it's simplifying my timeline. It's not as lengthy anymore. And then I could come in here and I have access to all of these if I need to come back and change any of those. So kind of hopefully kind of a cool tip. Okay, um, we are running short on time here. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is we're going to start working on um, this region here. So we've done pretty much the whole part here and now I want to create this little lip that's on the top right here. So I'm going to do something like this. Say create a sketch. Okay. I'll zoom up so we can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. Center, diameter, circle. And in this case, according to the drawing, it's one inch in diameter. So you can kind of see just shy of the edge. Um, then I want to do a center rectangle, just like we've done before. And the width of this needs to be 0.47. Okay. And then um, I'm just going to get near this edge right here and you can see it would snap to that but I want to actually go past this because I don't want it to be touching that edge I want it to be tangent to that edge so I'm gonna go past and say tangent from there to there and we can see everything turned black this line is now tangent to that circle and I have some geometry um, and I made a mistake. I put this sketch on the top face when I accidentally, or actually meant to put it on that face there. Okay? And this happens quite often. So here's another tip. If I, and I've already created my geometry, my sketch. I'm going to right click on my sketch and say redefine sketch plane then I can click on this face and you'll see whoosh, it just brought it straight down and my sketch is now in the correct location so instead of having to recreate it I was able to just redefine the sketch plane okay we'll grab this guy we'll extrude upwards in this case you can see it's a negative number um, so I need to look at my notes for what the the uh, distance is so I don't have to keep jumping back so it's 0.1 so I'm gonna say minus 0.1 and I want to instead of creating it as a new body I'm good with this I'm gonna say um, join so I just want it to join to that body okay and we now have that little lip that we needed Okay, we're getting to get ready, and again, um, like I mentioned, we are probably gonna go long on this one. I wanna show how to create that cutter. I don't really wanna separate this into two um, sessions, so hopefully uh, you all can uh, attend for a few minutes longer. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I need to create some geometry that's gonna help me define um, the angle of the cutter and all that kind of stuff. We need to create an opening in here so the cutter can actually get to the pencil. So I'm going to just create a sketch on one of these side planes, this, this right plane right here, or this front plane I should say. Okay, and I'm gonna project, but this time I want to project the whole body. So you'll notice as I hover over, it's basically gonna trace around the whole thing, and that gives me some points but I don't see all these ribs and stuff like that being projected it's basically just almost like a silhouette then I'm just gonna create a line and I want to catch this point right here so I'm gonna click on that point right there and I'm going to come down to this edge right here now I don't want to catch to the center I'm just gonna catch to that edge like so I don't want it to be an object line, so I'm going to click on it and change it to a construction line. And I want it to match that line right there. So I'm going to do a parallel constraint. I want that line to be parallel with that line. And you'll see now they're parallel with each other. Okay, so this is basically the axis that we're going to create everything with. 
And if you look at the drawing, we can see um, there's lots of dimensions and all this kind of stuff, but it's basically sitting on a little pedestal right here. Uh, and this cutter is gonna kind of revolve and spin around that pedestal. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So I need to create a sketch plane along this line at a very specific distance according to the drawing 1.2. So check this out. There's a, a neat construction here called plane along a path. Okay, so what's the path? That's the path there. And you'll see I can put that plane anywhere I want along this line. And you'll notice it says proportional. So if I typed in 0.5, that plane is now halfway along that line or that path. If I said 0.75, it's gonna be three quarters of the way along that path. But I can also come in here and say physical distance. So from this point, I want to be a very specific distance, and in this case, 1.2, and you'll see how that plane is now 1.2 inches from that point. And I now have a plane right there that I can use to create a sketch on. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll say create a sketch. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit isometric so we can kind of see what's going on here. C for circle, I'll click that zero, zero point right there. I'm gonna do a half inch circle and I'm gonna do a 0.35 circle at the same time. I'm actually gonna save some time here and we're, we're gonna use one of these circles to remove some geometry and we're gonna use the other circle to define some geometry. Okay, so let's grab both these guys extrude and I'm going to start to drag and you're going to see that we're physically cutting using both of these circles we're kind of cutting away so we have a spot for the pencil to come through and we're going to go up uh, one and a half inch oops I lied not one and a half uh, one inch um, 1.15 look at my drawing here <laughs> sorry guys um, so we can see we're cutting all the way up 1.15 inches and you can kind of see how that's going to open everything up. I'll say okay and let's take a look inside. We can kind of look down. We kind of opened up this area for the, the cutter to get to the pencil. I'll turn my sketch back on and this time I'm going to grab the smaller circle and actually before I do that, here's something I kind of like to do. I'm going to be creating another part. And you can see I named this component Cutter Assembly. Well, if I right click on this, I can say New Component because I want the actual physical cutter to be its own component. That's going to simplify my timeline substantially. So I'm going to say New Component and I'm gonna call this cutter. It's gonna be active. I'll say okay. And you'll notice that this ghosts out in my timeline. I haven't done anything yet, but I now have a new component underneath this cutter assembly called cutter, okay? And it's active. I can use existing geometry. I can reference edges and faces and all that kind of stuff. So now I can use this um, profile right here. Okay, I'll say extrude and we're gonna make that uh, one, oops, one inch tall and there's that guy. So that's kind of the basic shape of my cutter. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is to create the the actual cutting edge. This is kind of cool. So I'm going to create a sketch on this face right here. And to simplify things, I'm going to turn off um, this body just to kind of turn it off for now. And this is just the cutter body that we're taking a look at. I'm going to use a polygon 
inscribed polygon. And check out what this allows me to do. I'm gonna kinda of get near the top here and you can see it's gonna to catch to that edge. So I'm gonna get fairly close to the top edge there. And then you'll notice it's creating an inscribed polygon to a specific radius. Well, I don't want six edges, I only want three. And now we have a triangle, okay? Then I can come in and specify what the radius of that is supposed to be, in this case, 0 0.05. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and click. Okay, it's not constrained. So I'm going to say, I want this point to be vertical with the center point. And then I want this line to be horizontal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that line and we forced it to be horizontal. And now you can see that it's fully constrained. Okay, now we're going to use the sweep command because we're going to sweep that profile along a path. But I have to have a path to sweep along. And I don't in this case. Okay, so I'm going to create a construction axis through a cylinder. I'll click on this cylindrical face and you can see this line, this axis that appeared, it's going right through the center of that. Now you would think I could use that as my path, but it's an infinite line. It looks like it stops, but it's infinite in length. So I can't use that as my path. But I can use it to create a construction plane because remember this this thing is at a weird angle if I look at it from the front I can't really use a top view I can't really use a side view or anything like that so I'm going to create plane at an angle and I'm just gonna click on that line and you can see that it's going to slice through my cylinder along that line and again I don't really care what the angle is it could be 22.2 .2 as far as I care but in this case I'm just gonna leave it to zero okay we'll sketch on that plane and I'm gonna project this geometry I'll say okay and we've now projected that geometry now I have something that I can actually create a line so you can see I can grab that point there to that point there and that is the exact distance I want to sweep this little tooth. Okay, so it took a couple steps, but I needed to get a path to sweep along. Okay, here comes the fun part. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this. So I'm going to use the sweep command. So under the create menu, sweep. Now we're going to do a single path. It's asking for the profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that as the profile. And then it's asking for a path. Kind of rotate a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on here. What's the path? Just this line right here. So you'll notice it's not letting me select the axis up here, but it is letting me select that line. And so it's gonna take that profile and sweep it along that path, okay? But we want it to twist, and notice right here, we have a twist angle. So if I typed in like 90, you'll see that it's gonna take that, it's still gonna sweep it along that path, but it's gonna twist around that path 90 degrees. In fact, we're gonna go minus 180, because I want the cutter to go, the, the blade to go a certain direction. But So you can kinda see, if we look at it from the top, it's taking that profile, it's sweeping it around 180 degrees. Pretty cool, I think. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down. We're always looking for feedback. Okay, so now I have this one tooth. I'm gonna come in here and say circular pattern. 
always, always, always check your pattern type. I don't want to do faces. I'd have to manually click all those faces. I'm going to come in here and say features. What's my feature? The sweep feature. What's my axis? I can click on that guy there. I could click on this surface here. It really doesn't matter. It gives me a preview of what that's going to look like. And I want to go to eight teeth. I'll say OK, and boom. We now have that one profile patterned all the way around um, eight times, basically. OK? OK, so now what I'm going to do is, again, kind of running short on time, There, we're going to put this little gear on the top, and then we're also going to put um, the, the shaft that this revolves around on there. So I'm going to go back to this um, original sketch right here. I'm just going to create a small circle. So instead of having to create another whole sketch, I'm just going to reuse this one because it's just a simple design. So 0 0.09 like so. Okay. And again, notice how simple my timeline is because we're working on just the cutter component. So there is that sketch, and I'm going to use that circle to kind of create that shaft, okay? So we'll do an extrude. Hopefully you'll learn a new tip here. So I'm going to say extrude, oops, sorry, extrude. I'm going to start to drag up. Now typically we do one side. I can come in here and say two sides. And this is actually going to allow me to extrude in two different directions and two different distances. Now, obviously, I don't want to cut, so I'm going to say join. And in this distance, you can kind of see that number changing right here. And in this distance, you can see that number changing down there. So I could come in, and again, according to the drawing, this needs to be 0.32 up. And this one needs to be um, 1.24 down from this surface right here. So it's going one, almost one and a quarter down, and it's going 0.32 up. So it's kind of a cool way of making the two different distances in the same command. So I'm going to go ahead and say join. OK. Let's turn off our construction, let's turn off our sketch, kind of simplify some, some stuff here. There's our cutter. The next thing I want to do is to put that little small gear. And I showed this last time. Um, I used this add-in called FM Gears. So I'm going to go ahead and click on FM Gears. And I'm going to create a spur gear. Now. There's a lot of information that I need to add in here, and this is actually a trick that Angelo showed me. He uses this a lot. You'll notice the comments down here. It's usually folded down. If I expand this open, you can see that I have added some comments in here. Um, and Angelo uses this quite a bit for like when he's designing parts and he knows he's going to use a special tool or a special cutter, he might add that into the comments and say, you know, use a blah, blah, blah cutter, you know, thread pitch is this, et cetera, et cetera. Instead of having to use like post-it notes or a notebook or something like that, you can actually capture it right in your design. And so you can see right here, um, you know, what the hole diameter is supposed to be. So I'm going to come in here and say zero. And again, all this information is on the drawing. Um, the diametral pitch is supposed to be uh, 36. So, you know, shout out to Angelo for showing this to me because it totally makes sense to capture it in the design than it does to capture it on your desk somewhere and you lose the uh, post-it note or whatever, it gets thrown away. Um, so gear thickness is 0.15. Okay, so that looks good. I'm going to say okay. And it's going to bring in that little tiny gear for me. I can fold this comments back down. And I'm just going to do a quick joint command. I'll grab the center of that gear. 
and I'll grab the center of that face and you'll see it's going to bring that gear and place that using the joint command. Okay. So that looks good. I'll say OK. And like I mentioned before, on the drawing, I put the information of what that's supposed to be. Now, these are two separate components. I'm going to expand this open. You'll see bodies in here, etc. Watch what happens when I combine this together. So I'm going to say combine. I want to add the gear to the cutter. So my target is going to be the cutter. The tool is going to be the gear. And sure enough, I want to join them together. I'm going to say OK. And notice what happened to my spur gear. It's, it's emptier. There's, there's not a bodies folder in there anymore because it's all one body right here. So I don't need this. It's basically an empty component. I don't even need this sketch anymore. So I'm going to right click on this guy and say remove. It makes my browser look simpler. And you can see that that's been removed out of there. This is still all one body, so that's good. OK. So the last thing I want to do now is I'm going to go back to this cutter assembly. Activate that guy. We'll turn the body back on. We can see you know, the cutter through there now. We can kind of see it sort of coming up through this tab. I want to create that little pedestal. Um, so I'm going to minimize the cutter. I'm going to expand open these sketches. And let me just find that sketch that we used to create um, that pedestal. And it might have been... Actually, I lied. It's under the cutter. So I'm going to bring that guy back open. Um, I hope. Sketches. Okay. I need to find, I'm running short on time, and so I'm starting to, trying to remember where everything, oh, there it is, I'm sorry, <laughs> right there, in front of my face. That's why I couldn't see it. Okay, so I want to turn that sketch back on, and we're going to use um, both of these profiles, so I'm going to grab both of those. I'll say extrude. Now notice I'm working on the cutter assembly, because that's this part right here, right? This not the cutter itself, but this guy here. So I activated my cutter assembly. I'm going to extrude to object right there. And I want to join. Now here's, um, you can kind of see it's going to extrude to that face, which is great. I'll say OK. And we now have, if I turn off that little cutter, you can kind of see we have a little pedestal that that thing is going to rotate around. Okay, almost done here. So obviously we need to allow this to pivot. Um, if I turn off this cutter, there's no hole for it to pivot in. So we're going to use, um, let me turn off that sketch to kind of simplify things. I'll turn my cutter back on. I'm going to use the hole command. And check this out. I'm just going to click on this top face right here. <laughs> and it kind of gives me a default diameter and so it looks like it's blowing it away so I'm going to drag this to be a little bit smaller here and you can kind of see what's going to happen okay I want to create a hole that is whoops too far centered so I'm going to move this and make sure it's centered and then I want it to be slightly larger than the shaft so I'm going to come in here and say 0 0.092 according to the drawing and I want to go a, a certain distance. So instead of distance, I'm going to say go to this face. OK, and you can kind of see what it's going to do here. It's going to take and create a hole that's a little bit larger than the shaft. And it's going to cut through all of this stuff. Well, I obviously don't want it to cut through the shaft. So right here is objects to cut. So I'm going to expand that open. 
I don't want it to cut through the cutter, so I'm going to turn that off. The only thing it's going to cut through now is the cutter assembly, this, this part here. I'll say OK. Let's turn off the cutter. And you can see there's a hole that goes all the way through, but it didn't cut through the, um, the actual cutter itself. So that objects to cut is a really cool option. It's usually folded down, or folded closed, I should say, but it allows you to specify what is this hole going to cut through. So you could have it cut through multiple parts at the same time, or you could have it cut through just a single part if you wanted to. Okay, um, so now what I'm going to do is let's, um, let's go ahead and change the appearance real quick. So I'm going to hit A for appearance. We'll drag this polycarbonate on there. We've used that before. That's kind of what it's made out of. And then maybe for the, the metal, we'll come in here and it's made out of steel because that's pretty strong. And let's just do maybe like a rough steel on there. We can kind of see what that looks like. Looks a little large, so I'm going to change the scale of that just to give it a little bit of texture. Kind of see how the light reflects off of that. And we are done with this particular part. So you can kind of see what that looks like with the cutter and those ribs and all that kind of stuff. So Hopefully you learned some new tips. Um, I did a couple different things this time using the surfacing to um, create those complex ribs and also using the surfacing to uh, grow some, some faces to allow us to use those for doing the replace face. Um, I apologize we went a little bit long. Remember that the uh, drawing and the outline are in the uh, description of the video. Uh, hopefully you have some fun doing this. Um, thanks to Angelo for uh, moderating the uh, the chat. I didn't get any messages from him, so hopefully you were all just kind of watching and, and learning, and hope to see you on a future live stream. Thank you.